Gary Owen. They asked me, they said, where do you want us to film your uh, hour special? I was like, Las Vegas, where else? It's one of the best days of my life have been in Las Vegas. You know? I remember my first time in Vegas, I ran into Nate Dogg on the street. I said, you had the greatest rap lyric ever written. Lick my balls. <laughs> That's the best rap lyric ever. Lick my balls. That song came out, I was in high school. I ain't know girls were licking balls. I was still trying to get a blowjob. Like, they licked the balls, too? <laughs> I called all my buddies. I'm like, we got to get to the West Coast. Why? Girls are licking balls <laughs> on the West Coast. <laughs> and he said, it ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. I was like, uh, you lick my balls. We together. <laughs> I'm not sharing you with nobody. You my lady. Forever my lady. <laughs> Vegas, they're like, uh, a lot of Mexicans in Vegas. Mexicans are everywhere. They're taking over the earth. <laughs> I tell everybody, learn Spanish now. The revolution is here. <laughs> I had a show in Alaska a couple weeks ago. There was Mexicans at my show in Alaska. I was like, you guys in Alaska? They say, hey, shut the fuck up, we're Eskimos. <laughs> burr, I say burr, Eskimos forever. <laughs> Live out in California. They're trying to kick all the Mexicans out. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, man, let them stay. Let the Mexicans stay, man. I just built my first house. Mexicans built my house. 22 Mexicans built my house in three days. <laughs> One fucking hammer. I understand what I'm saying in my life. He would hammer, throw it, catch it, flick it back. Like... <laughs> so what else is going on in the earth? Yeah. Basketball, we don't. Basketball, everybody's having locked out. NFL was locked out for a little bit. Basketball's locked out for a little bit, you know? I, don't, I like last basketball season, man. I, I, like the, I like the NBA Finals. I had a good time watching it. I like the, the Mavericks versus the Heat, you know? Uh, I saw some subliminal racist shit when I was watching the TV games of that. Because every time Dirk Nowitzki got the ball, the announcers say, watch out, Dirk Nowitzki's a lot quicker than he looks. <laughs> what the hell's quick look like, motherfucker? During the Wizards against the NBA Finals MVP, he can't even get a shoe. When the hell's a white guy going to get a shoe? We are long overdue for a shoe. <laughs> At this point, white people, we need on the Nike or Adidas. We'll take Pony or Puma. Shit. Give me some Dirk Dada, some Steve Nash New Balance or something. I'll take some Keith Van Horn kangaroos. I'll rock the keys. I don't know why I ever got mad at LeBron last year, you know, because he, he went from the most beloved player to the most hated because he left Cleveland and went to Miami. I'm a comedian, I travel every week. I've been to Cleveland, been to Miami. Not a tough decision, they ask me where I wanna live. <laughs> That's not asking some dude, hey man, who'd you rather fuck, Beyonce or Precious? Uh, I'm gonna go Beyonce, I'm gonna go Beyonce on this one. Yeah, I'll go Beyonce. But Precious raised you, you grew up with Precious. I don't wanna fuck Precious no more. <laughs> saw this documentary on LeBron too called More Than a Game. They had, his, he, they had his high school coach on there and his mom was on there and they said LeBron was raised by a single mother in Akron, Ohio and then interviewed his high school coach and, Le, and his high school coach was like, you know, if LeBron would have had a dad in his life, his game would be at a whole nother level. I said, I don't think so. I think LeBron's better because he didn't have a dad in his life because LeBron's got like a broken home type of game because you could tell there's some pent up aggression come from somewhere when he's on the court because he'd be dribbling hard, passing hard, dunking hard. Where the fuck is my dad, mom? Shit! God damn! You, know? you ever see Kobe Bryant? Kobe had a mom and dad. Bounce pass layup. Hey, dad. <laughs> That's the one good thing about being a comedian, man. You get to. You get to meet a lot of athletes you probably normally wouldn't get to meet if I wasn't a comedian. Like, like I remember I met Dwayne Wade his rookie year. Now, uh, me and Dwayne are friends. We ain't best friends, but we cool, we friends, you know. I call him, he don't answer, but he'll text me back sometimes, you know. 
But I don't know why. My son's 10, right? My son's 10. Last year, my son was 9. You know, I don't know why my son said, uh, he asked me, he goes, Dad, who's your best friend? I said, Dwayne Wade from Miami Heat. I don't know why I said it. Just popped out. Thought he'd forget, right? Well, this past March, spring break comes around. Uh, I said, when do you do spring break? My son goes, I want to go to Miami. I'm going to go to Heat game and meet your best friend, Dwayne Wade. I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, are you serious? So... <laughs> So I called Dwayne, he ain't answer. He texted me back a few days later, said, come on down. And I tell people, man, you ever get a chance to go to an NBA game, go. If a player leaves the tickets, definitely go. Uh, what I don't recommend, a mistake that I made, was Dwayne left me a parking pass. So I got to park in the player's parking lot. Don't recommend it to the average person because, you know, I fly down to Miami, I got my son with me, we pulled to the arena. I'm feeling really good about my life at that point, you know? I'm in, I'm in a Ford Explorer rental from Enterprise with the GPS and the XM in it. And Enterprise asked me, they was like, Mr. Owens, would you like XM radio? I said, how much is it? They said, eight dollars a day. I said, let's see, we here for four days, thirty-two dollars, get that shit. That's how your daddy does it, son. Thirty-two dollars ain't shit to me. <laughs> I swear to God, we put in Miami Heat parking lot, there were some cars there I never heard of. My son looked at me, he's like, Dad, you gotta get your life together. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I got XM, son, thirty-two dollars. Then Dwayne, I had a parking spot, I had a parking spot in Dwayne's car, right? So Dwayne left me a parking spot, uh, and Dwayne drove a Maybach that day, right? And in the rims of the Maybach, he had DW. He had DW in the rims. My son was like, dang, Dad, what kind of car is that? I was like a Dodge Wind. <laughs> yeah, that's that new Dodge, that's that new shit. <laughs> he said, well, it says Maybach on the back. I go, well, he got to take it back in May. That's not a good investment, son. We got to return that in five weeks, man. He must have bought that in June. He leased it. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna talk about people too bad in my in this show, man. I'm, I'm a big believer in karma, man. Karma comes back on you, man. You know, especially nowadays with social media, Facebook, and Twitter. You don't know who's following you, man. You know who's following me on Twitter, and I didn't even know it was Tyrese. Tyrese is following me, and I didn't even know it. I'm at a party, and Tyrese came at me sideways because I talked about him a little bit on Twitter, right? Like I saw his girlfriend. His girl came up to me, and she's like, "Gary," I was like, "What's up?" You know? And then she goes, "Hey, this is my boyfriend." I was like, "What's up?" And Tyrese. Was, you didn't even look at me. He was just like, man, I'm real. I was like, what? He said, yeah, man, I'm just real. I, go, I, th I thought you were Tyrese. You know? And then, <laughs> and then he said, man, you, you talk about me on Twitter. I said, mm -hmm. And it didn't help that he's sober and I'm drunk, so my stuff's not coming out right. So he's like, yeah, you talk. I said, I ain't talking about you on Twitter. And then he quoted me, whipped his cell phone out and showed me like he favored it. You know, he, I, I guess I said, I said, uh, if Tyrese is such an expert at relationships, why is he divorced? You know, he ain't like that, you know? I said, well, I didn't mean it, man, sorry. And then he said, uh, yeah, he whipped out another one. He goes, uh, every time I saw Tyrese and Transformers, I kept waiting for him to give the Autobots deep relationship advice, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's coming at me, and people starting gathering. I said, I, and I was thinking to myself, man, is Tyrese coming at me sideways? Like, people started looking at me like he was embarrassing me. So I was just thinking, I was like, Tyrese coming at me sideways? Like, Jody? The Jody who got my hoe pregnant? The Jody who can't handle his responsibilities as a motherfucking man? The Jody still lives at home with his mama? The Jody running the streets like a little boy? Motherfucker, you a bitch! I ain't say that. I ain't say that. But I thought it. I thought it. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Football, man. Last summer was rough, man. And the football lockout, I thought the football was going to end. You know, I was like, damn, there ain't no football. I don't know what I was going to do, man. Football is my favorite sport to watch on TV. I love it. I like, I like high school, pro, college, man. I love it, man. You know, you know. I wish, uh, uh, I remember when I was in high school, though. I remember in high school, I was, uh, you know, I remember I was playing football. I went to an all white high school, though. We didn't, we didn't have any black guys in my school district. And then I do remember my junior year of high school, we had one black guy move to our school district and sign up for football. Oh, we thought we was going to state. I ain't lying, man. That brother showed up. He's like, guys, look, there's a black in the team. It is fucking on this year. <laughs> that guy fucking sucked, man. He was a foreign exchange student from France. <laughs> then I remember, I remember freshman year, I never played football before. My buddy's like, Gary, go for the team. I was like, all right. So I went up for the team. And the first, first game we ever played, we played at all black high school. And they came to our school, you know? So we were off to the field doing our stretches. And the black high school pulled up. They didn't even stretch. They just got off the bus, stood on the 50, and started staring at us, you know? <laughs> then they started doing some kind of chant with their pads. It fucked us up. We didn't know what to do. <laughs> they were just sitting there. I was like, coach, you're not stretching. <laughs> they stretch on the bus. Come on, guys, arm circles. Don't look at them, guys. Arm circles. 
Let's go big. Let's go backwards. They're not leaving. We're going to have to play. They're not leaving. I remember the first play of the whole game. We get the ball first, right? On the tight end, the linebacker on the black school, he start growling at us. We were lost. We didn't know what to do. First play of the whole game, here goes this brother. We get back to the huddle. We're like, coach, they're growling at us. What do we do? They're growling. Our coach is like, growl back. Growl back, man. Swear to God, second down. Here he goes again. This dude on our team, rough, rough, rough. I go, what the fuck? Jeff, he said growl. Are you rough roughing? Are you serious? Like a tiger or a lion, dude. It's not like a teacup Yorkie. I always said my dream job would be to own a football team, like to own my own football team, you know, if I had my own team. First thing I would do, though, I know what it takes to have a good football team. First thing I would do is if there are black guys on the team, I always tell people, make them the captain. Even not as good as white guys, don't worry, make them the captain because it's all about that pregame speech, you know. Any guy in here that's ever played football, you know if you make a white guy the captain of your football team and it's a white guy's job to get that pregame speech before the game, it's not going to come out right, you know, because white guys, we get too pumped, we get too amped thinking about the game, you know. We'll get tongue-tied halfway through our speech in a locker room, you know. Let's go! All right! Tonight! Yeah! Billy Johnny! Get Johnny! The field! The field, let's go! Let's go! Let's fucking rock! Like, dude, it's JV, relax, fucker. Nobody's here but our parents, dude. Chill out, we're not even making the paper. Black guys are pumping you up good. Black guys are doing shit during the game. As a white player, you didn't know you could do just in a pregame speech, man. Black guys are pumping you up good. What time is it? What time is it? It's game time. It's game time. Holy shit, we're jumping, dude. What are we doing? I don't know. Dude, the black is doing. Follow him, dude. What the fuck is this shit, man? I don't like, I'll tell you what I don't like about the NFL. I don't like how they took away the uh, end zone celebration, you know? Like, if you score a touchdown, you can't celebrate, you know? But any of us should have been honest with the public and said, look, this is a black penalty, you know? Because no white guy's ever been penalized for dancing in the end zone after he scored, you know? White guys score, we're just shocked to be there, you know? <laughs> we crossed the goal line, here you go. That was crazy, good blocking, guys, wow. No, get the camera away, get the camera away. No, 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 <laughs> team game, team game. Black guy score. You know what the hell to do when a brother scores. I'll tell you, I don't think brothers know what he's gonna do half the time, you know? But I'll tell you what, when a brother scores, he knows right where the camera is. Since the brother crossed the end zone, he gets right to the camera. <laughs> What's up, bitches? You should have sucked my dick in high school. I'm in the NFL now, bitch. Is that the new shit? What the fuck is this?